Welcome to Lesson 13a, Particle Removal by Raindrops. Today I'm going to introduce some of the basic physics of particle removal by raindrops, and we'll introduce something called single drop collection efficiency. So by way of introduction, did you ever notice that the air smells fresh and clean after a good rain? Why? Well, it turns out that rain is very effective at removing particles from the air, and some vapors too. But we're gonna concentrate on particles. Is that why my allergies always seem better after it rains? That's right, Mr. Nerdly. Good observation. So some fundamentals. Let's consider a single raindrop of diameter DC that's falling in still air. So it's going to fall at some speed, terminal settling speed, VTC. The air is quiescent or still. Let's list some approximations and assumptions. First, we'll assume that the raindrop is spherical, where the diameter is DC as I drew. The C stands for collector, because this drop is collecting particles from the air. This raindrop falls at its terminal settling speed, VT, which you know how to calculate. You'll have to iterate, as we're used to doing. The air is dusty and polydispersed, but as usual, we consider only one particle diameter at a time. I should say we're also considering only one raindrop at a time, at least for now. The next assumption is that if a particle hits the raindrop, it gets collected. You can also say it's absorbed or captured. So if a particle happens to hit that raindrop, we'll assume that it gets inside the raindrop. It doesn't affect the raindrop, but it just gets absorbed by it. That's a very critical assumption here that will help us to solve these kinds of problems. Finally, DC is greater than DP. It really doesn't make sense to talk about particles that are bigger than the raindrop itself. In fact, typically, we're talking about very big raindrops compared to air pollution particles. Now, we can think about this in two reference frames, the absolute frame of reference or a frame of reference moving with the raindrop. In other words, falling with the raindrop. Pretend you're a camera, and as this raindrop falls, you're just falling right along with it. So in the absolute frame of reference, our raindrop is falling at terminal settling speed VT comma C. I forgot to put the comma C up here, so that's the VTC of the raindrop. There's dusty air. These particles are falling at some VTP, We'll take that into account later when we do our analysis, but for now, just ignore that and just assume that the air pollution particles are falling very, very slowly compared to the raindrop itself, which is much bigger. If we transform into the frame of reference moving with the raindrop, now the raindrop seems to be standing still because we're moving with it, and the air is moving up at speed VTC. And so all these particles are moving up with the air. In this frame of reference, the particles are moving up also at VTC, technically a little less than that because they're also falling due to gravity. Now, some of these particles hit the drop and get absorbed, while others don't. At first glance, you might say that everything under the raindrop gets collected, but that's not true because this raindrop is a sphere and the air has to move around it. There are air streamlines, and that's how we we're going to analyze this. And we're going to use this frame of reference moving with the raindrop. So here's our analysis in that frame of reference moving with the raindrop. From a fluid mechanics point of view, we have a sphere. Everything I draw here is axisymmetric. We have air and particles moving up at VTC. If I plot some air streamlines, this is symmetric left and right since it's an axisymmetric problem, a sphere, we'll have a stagnation point with the streamline that's right in the middle. The rest of the streamlines divert around it. So technically, none of the air streamlines actually hit the drop except the one at the stagnation point. The rest of them move around the sphere. Now consider this dusty air, and I'm only going to draw a slice here, but the whole air is dusty. All, all the air here is dusty. Those particles are moving up with the air. Let's draw two vertical lines indicating the extent of this raindrop at diameter DC. So this will just be DC here, or the radius RC. Now take a cross section looking up from the bottom. What do you see? Well, you're going to see a circle. That's the raindrop. You see a circle of radius RC when you look straight up from below. Raindrops falling right into your eye as you look up. Now let's consider these particles. The ones that happen to be right in the middle will just go straight up and get absorbed. The ones a little bit to one side, they're going to swerve like that because of inertial separation and may or may not hit the drop. So the one I'm drawing here does hit that drop, but the one here, let's suppose that one misses the drop. So there's some magic location, some magic radius here where the particles veer and just barely get absorbed by the raindrop. This is symmetric, so the same thing happens on the other side. 
it's actually symmetric actually. So it happens all the way around. It's a circle. Now, if I imagine drawing a line straight down from that location where these are just captured, we're going to call that radius R1. R1 is the capture radius. And so looking from directly below, drawing our tangents, we also draw a circle here, a red one at radius R1. And that circle represents the capture area. And the area of a circle is just pi r squared. So this capture area is pi r1 squared. This bigger blue circle is the projected area. That's what we use in fluid mechanics when we're talking about drag coefficients on a sphere. That's just a circle of radius rc or diameter dc. So that area is pi rc squared. From this diagram, we can see that all particles that are directly under the drop do not get captured, only some of them do, namely the ones that are within this red capture area. So I can summarize by saying all the particles at r less than r1, in other words, they're within the capture area, get captured. And all particles at r greater than r1, which is outside the capture area, do not get captured. So that's pretty simple analysis, except we don't know what R1 is. I'll give you some equations for R1 next time. But for now, I want to just define a single drop collection efficiency. It's a grade efficiency. I'm going to put a subscript D for the single drop. So the A to D as a function of DP is the single drop collection efficiency. It's defined as the fraction of mass of particles under the raindrop that are collected. That'll be our definition of single drop collection efficiency. Well, what is it? Well, it's just the fraction of particles that are in this radius R1, this capture area, compared to all the particles that are directly under the projected area, which is RC, radius RC. Technically, in terms of mass, we can write A to D as a function of DP is the mass concentration, CJ0, of the uncleaned air, the dusty air below the drop. We'll call that CJ0. So A to D DP is that mass concentration times Q, volume flow rate of the capture area, the red circle above. That gives us a mass flow rate, concentration times volume flow rate, over CJ0 times Q of the projected area, the blue circle above. Well, these CJ knots cancel out, and we know that volume flow rate is simply speed times area. The air is moving up at speed VTC, so the speed is VTC, and the area of the capture area is pi R1 squared. And the particles directly underneath the drop, the projected area, their Q is then the speed VTC, the same speed, times pi RC squared. So these VTs cancel, pi's cancel, and so we have single drop collection efficiency being R1 over RC squared, or in terms of diameters, if you prefer, D1 over DC squared. So that's our result, and I typed that out here. In summary, single drop collection efficiency, A to D of DP is given by the ratio of these radii, or these diameters. And then I just summarized RC is the radius, and DC is the diameter of the falling raindrop, which is the collector. That's why there's a subscript C. And for lack of anything better, I just use a 1 here. R1 is the radius, and D1 is the diameter of the capture area below the raindrop. I didn't want to use another C. Now let's do a simple example. So a spherical raindrop raindrop falls in quiescent dusty air. Here's some properties, pressure, temperature, diameter of the raindrop. And then for particles of interest, then I'm going to show you how to get these R's. But for now, I'll just give it as for certain particles, it's 13.6 microns. Let's estimate the single drop collection efficiency for these particles of interest that happen to be directly under the raindrop as the raindrop falls as a percentage. So we'll just use that equation we just derived. So this is pretty simple. I'll do the diameters. So the diameter is the radius times 2, and that's in microns. And then DC was given as 200 microns. That's squared. Microns cancel. And then to get it in percent, we multiply by 100%, and I get 1.85% as my answer. That's pretty small. And you might say, well, this raindrop isn't a very good collector for these particles. Well, that's true. But keep in mind that when it rains, you don't just have one raindrop. You have have thousands of them generally, and they're all falling, all pretty much similar sizes. And the point is that if a particle, say this is a particle, and maybe it misses this one, and then it gets in the wake and moves around and maybe misses that one, at some point it may hit one of the ones further up. 
So even though this 1.85% is small, you have a whole bunch of raindrops that are kind of in series with each other. And so it's kind of a big set of air cleaners in series. And when you have hundreds or thousands of these raindrops, your overall efficiency can get much higher than that. And that result being that the overall removal efficiency of rain is very high actually. And that's why it smells so good after a nice rainfall. I hope it rains today. Me too, Ned. Me too. Finally, we have to realize that this eta dp, it's a function of dp, so it's a grade efficiency. So as we always do, we repeat for a range of dp. Each dp will have a different value of this r1 capture radius. So we can make our usual grade efficiency plot in percentage, 0 to 100%, as a function of dp. And we expect it to have a typical s-curve, although it may not always go to 100%, and we'll see why later. So this would be at some capture diameter, say dc1, and then at some other capture diameter, it may have a different curve because you have a larger or smaller raindrop. So next time we'll develop some equations where we can calculate these grade efficiencies for actual raindrops and actual particles. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.